Alright, continuing on with the JU52 Regal's Dare build. I have finished painting and weathering up the engines. Uh, use Citadel paints to paint it up. Uh, primarily, um, what was that one? Lead Belcher, which is a base colour. Um, Iron Breaker, which is like a silver. And Abaddon Black. Uh, so that was the painted up. I also hit it with some um, uh, gun down weathering markers. What was that? Okay. Uh, tools falling down all over the place. Um, so yeah, I've hit it up with all that. Uh, then I've weathered it using Tamiya and Humbrol weathering sets. And part of the way through, I realised I need to open up these exhausts. So I have used my motor tool and using from point um, three right up to about point nine millimetre um, drill bits. I have increased the size of the holes, and because I um, did that after weathering and all that, I had to redo everything. So, there they are, all finished, all of the holes in it. Um, I have gone ahead and fitted number one engine to its cowling, and that's that's where it, that one's at. So I'll just wait for that, to, that glue to dry, and um, then do some putting around that join that you can see there. And that's it. All right. So, quick update, and I'm also working on masking the canopy, and I'll finally mask the side windows as well. So, uh, I can't think of anything further that I'm going to do to this build. Might be a few more parts to add, but other than that, we're close to being painted. We'll get into the painting stage. Alright, see you shortly. G'day all, welcome back to the workbench. Continuing on with the JU52 build. For, uh, in the guise of the aircraft and where Eagles Dare. <coughs> now, last we spoke, we just put everything together, ready for painting, so I primed it. And many of you may be looking at saying, you didn't take the DF loop off. Uh, yeah, gonna do that shortly. However though, I have a few quandaries to deal with. Uh, one of them is the paint. Now, looking at IPMS Stockholm's website, I recommend the paint for the winter colour is Humbrol 34 and Humbrol 46, I think it is, which is ivory and flat white. Not using Humbrol paints, I'm using uh, Gunsy. So I'm settling on 21, which is an off-white. And... 316, which is a gloss white. Uh, yes, I know it's not flat white. But I think just adding a bit of gloss colour to this will help with decaling later on. There's some decals, like the uh, Balkan Cruise and the Swastika sticker on the table. On the tail, sorry. Table. Sta tail. Uh, they need to be put on as decals. The numberings, uh, the numbers, uh, yeah, they're going to be put on numbers, uh, on those decals as well. I'm just going to make some decals up and print them out. So that's what I'm settling on with the main paint colour. Uh, now the undersurface. Now all the photo references I've got shows no clear colour for the undersurface. So, what I'm going to do is paint it as a traditional German aircraft would be painted, and that is with uh, RLM 65 light blue underneath. However, though, if you look at that colour, and 
blue, the white at least. I think no, I'll use the um, off white. That's a, a significant contrast between the two, so I'm going to cut it back um, with a bit of off white just to bring it down a couple of shades. Uh, just to, so it doesn't contrast. In the movie, you don't really see the other side, but the closest you see what the bottom colour would be is on the side of the engines. So there's a demarcation along the engines here. The top side is black, the bottom side is a, uh, a hue of white or blue. I'm not too clear on it. Uh, reading up on the movie, they actually used a lot of blue filters through the movie to give the impression of night flying. Uh, now, another scene where this lands on uh, Oberhausen Airfield is during the daytime. However, though, you still don't get a good look at the sides. So, yeah, going to run with that just for the fun of it. And the green, I'm still trying to figure out what green to use. Uh, with all my paint collection, I don't have a German green anywhere, so I might find something similar. Now, it looks like more of an, a, a uh, green green version of olive drab. Yeah, that sounds weird, but yeah, that's what it sounds like. Uh, maybe an olive colour from the uh, references I've seen around the place. Uh, a few people have painted theirs in a a strong dark green or a dark green if you like uh, but yeah I, I'm not too certain there um, if anything I should stick with if I'm going to go German type colouring schemes uh, white white um, camouflage or distemper would have been applied over your 7175 I think it's 75 uh, yes 7175 or 72 Splinter Skin, which is uh, your dark green and your light green. So I'm still playing with that. However, the splinter pattern, it's not a splinter pattern, it's a uh, jagged pattern that goes right across. So you don't see the differences between the splinter pattern on a traditional aircraft. Um, and your distemper pattern would have been more like a white wash on top. So it's still tossing up. I'm still looking for the green. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll work on it from there. Okay, the wheels have been done. Now, the kit wheels, I've actually added a shim of, uh, what is that, 40,000, I think it is, card between the two halves to fatten them up. They looked a bit too thin when I put them together, so I just stuck that in, fattened it up, just to give it some bulk. And they actually look a lot better now. Uh, what else to do? Uh, and doing some more scouring on the internet. I'll throw some pictures up uh, very shortly. The aircraft itself, uh, from the movie, it was a old Swiss Air Force aircraft 702. So it had didn't have that on it. Had an antenna at the front. Depending on what angle you looked at it from, too, that antenna kept on moving about. Uh, it had these two um, bowls at the back, but also had an air scoop, approximately a halfway between those two, and a couple of what appear to be whip antennas coming up out of the middle as well. So I've now got to um, put that little air scoop in there. Eh? And some photos show there's another. Um, I call it a hose uh, that points backwards. It curls over and points backwards at, uh, on top of the fuselage. Uh, so it's, yeah, I'm going to put those couple of pieces on before I go into painting. Uh, it's primed now with uh, good old Tamiya Grey Fine Primer. Top and bottom, and I just found a fault. I got a bit of a gap there where the uh, strut goes into the fuselage. That's okay. And Mike, not not my cat, the family cat has decided to pay me a visit a couple of times. So I've got cat hair all over this, and it broke off this little part here. 
was not happy. Okay, anyway, that's where it's at. I'll throw out those photos shortly so you can see what I'm talking about. See you soon.